President Joe Biden made a comment on a Zoom campaign call earlier this week, and it has created a new headache for Democratic nominee Kamala Harris less than a week before Election Day. Shortly before Harris was about to speak on Tuesday night, Biden got on a call with a Hispanic advocacy group and commented on a comic's recent insults at a Trump rally, where he referred to Puerto Rico as a, quote, floating island of garbage. The president quickly sent out a social media post to clarify his remarks about Trump. But his words were quickly, quickly seized on by Republicans who said he was denigrating Trump supporters. But Harris, for her part, has been trying to differentiate herself from Biden, saying she strongly disagreed, quote, with any criticism of people based on who they vote for. And she has been trying to distance herself from her boss over the past few months of her campaign. But has she succeeded in doing so? Let's bring in Rich Rubino for discussion. He's a friend of the show. Always appreciate having him on. Thanks so much for joining us bright and early here on Live Now from Fox. My pleasure. All right, I want to start with this comment from Biden about garbage. Trump has really run with it. We've seen at his rallies now he's wearing that orange safety vest. So my question for you is just a week before Election Day, Harris has spoken out against this, but do you think this is going to impact voters or sway their decision at all? Not really. I think that this is kind of a side issue, if you will. All it does is it does give her some some it does give her an answer to say what what where she distanced herself from Joe Biden. So far, she's been very kind of nebulous, very vague about it. This gives her one kind of issue where she's able to separate herself a little bit. But at the end of the day, we're talking about very few swing voters. I don't think this is necessarily going to bring any over to um over to her over to her column or for that matter over to Trump's column. Do you think that she has distanced herself enough in the three months since she announced her candidacy? Because that's not a whole lot of time, right? I mean, Trump started his campaign way before she did. So do you think she has succeeded in that? No, I don't think so. I think that if you have a president who's under 50 percent, you need to have a big issue where you distance yourself from that president. I go back to Lyndon Johnson, for example, in 1968, had a job approval rating in the 30s. Hubert Humphrey was the, was his vice president, was running for the Democratic presidential nomination. And September 30th of that year, he spoke in Salt Lake City, Utah, and said, unlike President Johnson, he said, I support a unilateral bombing halt of North Vietnam as an acceptable risk for peace. When he did that, a lot of the people on the left wing of the Democratic Party who had been opposed to him, who had who wanted Eugene McCarthy, the senator from Minnesota, who was against the Vietnam War to be the nominee, gradually gradually came over to him, and he almost and he, and he started to make up. He was down by about 15 points and only lost by about a point. But that was really a flagship issue at the time, and Humphrey was able to distance himself from President Johnson. Vice President Harris needs something similar to that, a real issue that says, this is not the way I would have handled it had I been president of the United States, something like that, but she really hasn't done that. If the president's job approval rating is at 60, 70 percent, then yes, you try to hug or even co-op that president, but you really, you don't do that. If a, you, if a president's job approval rating is 50 percent or below, you really need a big issue to do, to separate yourself with. Let's talk a little bit then how she has said she will differentiate herself from Biden because we know the border is a really big concern for voters. And she has said, you know, I'm going to be different than Biden. How is she going to do that? Well, she's, she's been very vague again about how she would be different than him um, and when it comes to the border um, and other issues, too. She really hasn't. I don't think she's really laid down a plan. Other than when she says, by the way, about being distanced from about how she would distance herself, she says something to the effect of we're different presidents. We're going to focus on we're going to focus on cutting costs, whereas under Joe Biden, we are focused on um, getting America out of the pandemic, the post pandemic era. So it's interesting that she is vague like that, because I think she really needs an issue. I don't think the border is an issue where she's really said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this separate from what Joe Biden did and what my what our current administration is doing. And this close to Election Day, do you think there are still voters who aren't going to vote for her because they do think she will be like her boss? There are, and I think it's on the left wing, not necessarily the center. And I think a lot of that is actually going to be in Michigan and Wisconsin. In Michigan, in the, in the Democratic primary, for example, where Joe Biden had nominal opposition, 100,000 people in Michigan voted uncommitted. And I think a lot of those are Arab and Muslim Americans in Michigan who believe that Vice President Harris is too tethered, if you will, to Joe Biden and their policy on Gaza. 
Um, she that is something where if she were to separate herself, I think that she would um, that she would that she would bring a lot of those voters into the fold. Some of them might go for the Green Party candidate Jill Stein. Some of them might stay home, and some of them might even vote for Donald Trump. Donald Trump spent a day yesterday. He was in Michigan. He made a stop in Dearborn, Michigan, which has the highest share of uh, Muslim Americans per capita of any city in the in the United States. Basically, trying to court the Muslim court Muslim Americans who were kind of distraught, if you will, or disaffected by the Biden Harris administration, what they view is their failure to um to get to get a to get a ceasefire between between to get a ceasefire in uh, in Israel. And this has been interesting because it, she's been having to distance herself from two people, right? From Biden trying to create her own way for herself, but also from Trump. It's it's interesting to watch. Yeah, it's really kind of, and, and I meant to say, by the way, Gaza, not Israel, but you're right. It really is um, kind of a delicate balancing act. I remember back in 2000 when the Ilian Gonzalez, if you remember, was a big issue, the Cuban refugee that came to America. And Bill Clinton had a job pool rating, by the way, back then, about 66%. But Al Gore actually found that issue when he separated himself and said that Elian Gonzalez and his family should be allowed to stay in the United States. Bill Clinton basically said that it would be better if he were to go back with his family in Cuba. But it gave him something that it gave him something to say that he would be able to that he would be different from Bill Clinton. Not I don't see Vice President Harris saying anything like that other than just talking in kind of um, in kind of opaque generalities. So we are so close now. Is there anything she could do maybe to try and appeal to those voters who may not be able to distance her from Biden? I think it's she has to call, and I think I'm talking from pure calculated political decision right now. She has to call, say that the Biden-Harris administration, basically say the Biden administration has not done enough to bring about a ceasefire, um, to bring about a ceasefire in the Middle East, something like that. I think if she does that, she will bring a lot of these people with her. There, there are a lot of disaffected Democrats. Last time around, Joe Biden won about 86 percent of Muslim American votes. This time around, there was a poll by the Center for American Islamic Relations that showed a Michigan Jill Stein is actually winning a plurality of these votes. Um, she really had, and Donald Trump, as I said, was actually appeared in Dearborn, Michigan. This could be her undoing in many respects. Now, how she does that, how she distances herself, I don't really know, but I think part of it is she just has to say that she'll do more to bring about a ceasefire, but it's kind of, it's really become, um, and it, it's really become an issue that's really had deleterious effects on her campaign, I think, and it really could be a danger, it really could be a danger zone because Michigan, specifically Wisconsin as well, are just critical battleground states in that blue wall as long as well as Pennsylvania. She needs to win at least two of those three states, I think, to be, I think, to win the election. My last question for you here. So Trump's rallies, we air them here as well as Harris's. And we've seen the past few rallies. He's put together this compilation about a minute or so of just clips of Harris saying his name over and over and over again, Donald Trump, Donald Trump. Uh, do you think that's a wise campaign strategy when you are trying to differentiate yourself from a candidate? I don't see how I don't see how it necessarily helps other than just simply to galvanize the base when he does that. The people in the crowd really cheer him on. I think that's part of his strategy. I think he likes that. But I don't see how it's necessarily going to bring over any swing voters. Um, that being said, there's so few swing voters right now. You're talking about maybe less than 100,000 voters. And, you, and obviously, that's going down in terms of people that are early voting in about seven swing states. So maybe his strategy is simply just to try to bring as many low propensity conservatives um, out to vote and learn from as as he as he as is humanly possible, um, and that's certainly what he's doing. All right, Rich. Again, thanks for coming on bright and early here. We always appreciate you. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on. Of course.